I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Microsoft Access playlist, and we're gonna take a look at VBA and how to sum an array. Now we've used arrays in all kinds of ways in my other videos, and we've sort of demonstrated the power of using arrays in your applications, mostly to do with speed and other kinds of uh, benefits that you can get. Uh, but in today's video, what I'd like to do is, is sum up values in, a, in an array. And this is something that uh, quite a few of you guys have asked me to do. And so today we're gonna do a simple walkthrough of how to sum the values in your array. Let's get to it. Interested in more cool topics like these? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Okay, guys, pretty fun one today. Today we are using this file here and we are going to sum up values in an array. And in order to do that, we're going to go to the create ribbon and we are going to take that module. We'll use a module today so that we can create a little subroutine that adds up uh, some numbers and this is going to be really cool. Okay, let's get started here. We are going to create a new subroutine to sum up the values in the array. And in order to do that, we'll use the uh, sub and end sub uh, statements. And we've got that here. So we'll just call this sum array. We'll call this subroutine. And we can call that by either just typing in the name into the immediate window, or we can you know, uh, call it from another procedure somewhere else. If we wanted to, we're not going to have any arguments in there in between those brackets. We're just going to create our own array here today and we're going to fill it with some numbers and then we're going to sum those up. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create our array and I'll just call that ARR and it's going to have uh, 10 items. We'll call for an array of 10, uh, but it is actually going to have 11 items in it. Uh, because we have 0 through 10 on that and so that adds one item so we're actually going to have 11 uh, items that we're going to work with and then just to make things more simple for our demonstration we'll set up a few variables okay the first item that we'll set up the first variable will be int item here and that will be an integer to denote each item and then we'll have an int items as an integer and that will uh, give us the number of items which we'll use later in the demo here and then of course we'll have a sum as an integer I'm going to use all integers today you can use decimals or whatever you want and that sum integer will be for of course the sum that we're looking for in our array and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a for next loop and we're going to load our array with some integers that we can add up. So in order to make a sum, we have to have integers that we load into our array. And so we're gonna do uh, for int item equals zero to 10, that's 11 items. Uh, we're gonna set the array item equal to 100 plus its position in, in the array. So we'll go 100 plus int item, so if it's, if it's item one, it'll be 101. If it's item two, it'll be 102, and and so on. And so that's going to give us some integer numbers that we can play with in order to do our sum. So that loads up our array, and that's exactly what we want to see there. And now that I think about it, we should add one more variable for each item in our array or element. And so I'm going to do another for next loop except this time I'm going to do for each and I'll do for each item in the array and then we can do something with that item and so we could do something simple like print out the item and that'll give us a list of all the items to make sure that we actually have an array filled with the stuff that we want and so there's our loop to load it and our loop to show it and I'm going to put an option explicit up here at the top of my module just to make sure that everything is explicit and I'll do a debug compile just to make sure that I don't have any glaring errors in there <laughs> and then we'll hit play and there we go so now we've got a list of numbers from 
100 all the way up to 110 and those numbers that's 11 numbers 11 integers and so we can do something with those numbers like add them together and so now we're ready to go so the first thing I'll do in order to get our sum going is we're going to take that sum integer up top there that one and we'll go ahead and we're going to initialize that to zero and so in order to do that we're going to say int sum equals zero and that's going to set the value for that starting at zero uh, so that we can do something with it we can add to it and not get and you know some kind of math math error or something like that because we cannot add null to a number it just doesn't work and so there we go so we can go uh, for each item in array and now we can go we can say that the sum is equal to the sum uh, plus the item now this assumes of course that the item is a number and we're going to come back to that uh, but we know at this case because we printed out all of the items uh, when we run this we know that it is all integers in our array and so we could do something like you know message box the sum is you know and put the number in there and uh, or we could load it into a variable or we can use it for all different kinds of purposes uh, but in this case we'll just say the sum is and the sum and so that'll give us a little message box if we do it that way and so what we can do from here is we can save it and we can give it a name we'll call this one mod sum and then we can you know go ahead and run it again and we can see how that works so let's go ahead and hit run on the toolbar here my screen is quite large and so I'm recording a small window off to the side and it popped up in the in the middle of the screen of course but it gave us our sum and that is the message box that we wanted to see there and so uh, now we could actually do a debug.print we could do other things like that if we wanted to uh, we could save that and then we can go ahead and hit hit play and it'll say the sum is 1155 and that includes all 11 elements in the array and that is what we want to see now you might be wondering well what happens if one of the elements in the array is not a number and so we try to add it and it doesn't work um, and it gives an error or something and we can get around that by saying you know if is numeric item it'll evaluate that item to see if it's a number or not and uh, if it is numeric then do our sum uh, equals sum plus item and so now we have a, a check in there that checks to see that the item we're evaluating is actually a number and not null or a header or something along those lines um, and that's what we want to see there so we could actually change our header if we wanted to so that zero um, in item zero uh, we could change that so we could say array zero is actually equal to some text uh, because we created an array of variants and variants can be different data types now you can create arrays of numbers too which will only take a number uh, but in this case we're using that zero item and by changing it to uh, for int item equals 1 to 10 that means we're leaving the zero as a null and then we're going to load that that zero element with quote my header end quote uh, but we're still evaluating each item in the array to add them together and so that is numeric comes in handy because it'll still give the right answer at the end here um, it disregards the text and just adds the numbers and that is fairly critical when you're adding numbers in array because sometimes you'll get an array of items and there will be nulls and empty strings and all kinds of stuff in there and is numeric helps a lot with that and we could do something else like we could try to trick it by putting a string into the second element or the number one element as we say it's not zero which is zero is the first element um, the second element is a r r one in brackets and we can put in uh, 101 in there if we want or we can put in a string that says 101 and that is going to be something that we can test out 
and we can see what happens there. So there we go, we can hit play on our, on our toolbar there and it does evaluate 101 to 101 and adds it as part of the sequence. And that's kind of what we expected to see there because it would evaluate to a number because uh, when you use is numeric it tests if, if it's a string that's a number or something like that. And so that's very, very handy. And so I can hit play on that. If I change it back to 101 and hit play, of course it adds it just like it did before. And that is exactly what we want to see there using the for each uh, method. And that is a very handy way of handling our array. And so I'm going to comment out the, the uh, equals 101 uh, statement because uh, that's kind of redundant if we're going to test something else. And we are going to test something else. We're going to get the count of items in our array. And so we can do that by saying that our int items variable there is equal to the upper bound of our array. And, and so that's going to give us back a number that we can use in order to evaluate or traverse the array. And it also allows you to do things like, uh, you know, if the number is, you know, within this range, then don't process it or do process it and those kind of things. And so this method is really, really handy. And so if I say debug.print um, the number of items, and it is actually the items plus one, um, because we know that we have more than one, more than 10, if it, if it comes back with 10, we actually have 11 when we include the element at position zero, and that is exactly what we want to see there. So we've got 11 items that we are going to traverse, and so we could say for item equals zero to the number of items that we got back from upper bound, which is 10, so we're going 0 to 10, just like we did before when we did for each, except this time we are explicitly saying, give me the value in this array of this element uh, number, you know, with int item as the number. And so now we can say, hey, you know, uh, print that out, but we're also going to test it like we did before. We're going to go if is numeric, and then the element at that position, ARR int item there, um, then you know we're going to do something with that. And so we can do something similar. We can reuse this sum variable at this point because we've already used it and we used the output. So we can reuse it by resetting it back to zero by saying int sum equals zero. And now we can use that in our for next loop that we've been creating here. We can say int sum equals int sum plus the element at position int item of our array there. And that is what we want to see there. And then at the end of it all, we can go debug.print. And we can say the sum is still equal to, <laughs> you know, the sum that we had before just to double check and make sure that we got the same amount there. And so that's pretty cool. Let's have a look over here. Uh, there's the four uh, in our for next loop. We're doing int item to int items. We're going to do a debug.print of each item along the way. And then we've got this uh, is numeric uh, if then. And then we're going to add that sum there. Oh, that next there needs to be an end if. That appears to be an issue. Let's change that to, uh, <laughs> let's clear our screen there and go end if at the end there and we'll save that. There we go. So we've got uh, our sum is being created just the way that it was before, except now we're traversing using numbers and we hit play and there we go. So the sum is still 1055 and there is the list of all of the items in our array, including my header, which is text. And that's what we want to see there. And the rest of them are integers and we added those together and they still equal 1055, and that's what we want to see. There's the first loop. It went through and got 1055. It said, hey, I've got 11 items, and there's the second loop. That also went to 1055, and that's exactly what we wanted to see, and that's how you can sum the elements in your VBA array. Want to protect your remote desktop from RDP spammers? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description.